first category it is not able to transmit any of the data but it has the ability to transfer only the voice copper wires has been coiled together it is in a helical form but it will going to be covered with some of the external material so that will be what considered as shielded in order to transmit the data and information in the form of radio frequencies antennas are used at both the side that is transmitter as well as at the side of receiver Hello everybody, welcome back to the session 4 on chapter 15 that is Networking Concepts. I am Rohini T.S. Lecturer, Department of Computer Science, Vidyashram Pre-University College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. So in the previous session of this chapter, we had a discussion regarding this Network Topologies. So under that, we had discussed regarding some of the types of topologies that includes Linear or Bus Topology. So in each kind of topology, I have discussed its advantage as well as its disadvantage. That in all, you have to be very cautious. So here we have discussed regarding star topology, ring as well as mesh and also I have done a discussion with regarding hybrid topology or a tree topology. So in our today's session we are going to learn with respect to transmission medium. So in order to transmit the data and information from one network or one workstation to another network, what are the mediums can we use? So that includes twisted pair cable, coaxial cable, optical fibers and also it includes radio waves. Then satellite we have infrared rays along with a laser. So this will be the content of our today's session. We'll see the first topic that is related to transmission medium. So as we all know that if I wanted to communicate then we require two workstations or we require two computer which is connected to the internet or a network. So then only communication will going to takes place. So for that purpose we are going to use the cables. So cable will going to establish communication between one workstation to another workstation. Then there will be a possibility of communicating and then there will be a possibility of exchanging the data and information from one workstation to another workstation. So for that we are going to use different kinds of transmission media. So that will be based on the type of material that we are going to use, the data rate it will going to carry and the length and its uh, strengthness, everything will going to be matters when we are changing from one medium to another medium so that you can see here so by transmission media or a communication channels of network the connecting cables or connecting media are being discussed so then what do you mean by connecting cables here the cables that connect to our more workstations or communication channels so that cable which is connecting to our more workstations. So when it is establishing a communication between one workstation to another workstation, then we are going to call that kind of cables as what communication channels. So for that, in that we have a first type which is the twisted pair cable. So as the name indicates, cables that is what copper cable has been twisted together. So that kind of transmission medium is considered as what twisted pair cable and this is also considered as one of the oldest and most commonly used transmission media. So here twisted pair consists of two insulated copper wires. So you can see the image here twisted together. So it will be in the helical form. So that is what uh, it will be like DNA structure. So two copper or two insulated copper wires are twisted together in order to carry the data and information. So the wires are twisted together in a helical form. So as I told it will be like this. So twisting is done because two parallel wires constitute a fine antenna. So by twisting this uh, two insulated coppers together that will going to build this antenna. So this antenna will going to help us in order to strengthen the medium or in order to strengthen the signals which is carried over that particular transition medium. So that here twisted pair can run several kilometers without amplification. But when it wanted to reach more distance or when the data needs to be take for the longer distance at the time it requires the repeaters. So this repeaters will be used in order to strengthen the signals whatever it is carrying in the this twisted pair cable. For that purpose we are going to use this repeaters in order to strengthen the signals that will going to help this medium in order to carry the data and signals for longer distance. So when this data and information is traveling for a too long distance at that time signal will going to be low 
or it will going to be weak. So in order to strengthen that, we are going to use the amplification method. There we are going to use this repeaters. What are the types of twisted pair cables we have? So it has two types. One is unshielded twisted pair and another one is shielded twisted pair. So as the name unshielded. So here also we have a insulated two copper wires, but it is not shielded by any of the external material. Then that kind of twisted pair will be considered as UTP or unshielded twisted pair. So that UTP is the copper media which is inherited from telephone which is being used for increasingly higher data rate. So this will going to carry the data in a high data rate and this UTP cable contains 2 to 4200 twisted pair. So if I consider any of the UTP or uh, unshielded twisted pair, so it has the capability to contain 2 to 4200 twisted pair. And why we are going to use this UTP? because it is flexible, it is not so rigid. So we can twist it. Uh, somehow it will be considered as what? Flexible and it is low cost media. It is not so expensive, no need to pay much. Somehow it is reasonable in nature and it can be used for voice or data communication. For what purpose we are going to use this uh, UTP? As I told, it is already inherited from the telephone. So it will going to be used for the transmission of data as well as the voice. Then what are the categories we have in this UTP? So it has five categories. One is category one, two, three, four, as well as five. So we are going to categorize it based on the data grade transmission rate. So first one that is category one, voice grade communication only. It is able to stake only the voice signals, but it will not going to transmit any data. That is category one. In the category two, the data grade transmission up to 4 Mbps, 4 megabits per second. It has the capability to transmit up to 4 Mbps. When it comes to the category 3, it will be up to 10 Mbps. Category 4, up to 16 Mbps. And category 5, which will be up to 1000 Mbps. Based on the data grade transmission, we are going to categorize it into five types. One, two, three, four, five. First category, it is not able to transmit any of the data, but it has the ability to transfer only the voice. So next we have a second type that is shielded twisted pair. In short, it will be termed as STP. So why we are going to use this STP that is shielded twisted pair? As the name indicates, it is coiled together. That means uh, Copper wires has been coiled together, it is in a helical form, but it will going to be covered with some of the external material. So that will be what considered as shielded. So it will be covered with some of the material so that this type of cables come with shielding of individual pairs of wires. So instead of pairing everything together, so in this uh, kind of STP, we are going to shield individual pairs of wires. So which is further protects it from external interference. So as the interference is nothing but that will going to weaken the signal. But so when the two copper insulated wires are twisted together and it is uh, coated with some of the shields at that time, it is uh, not able to act with this external interference that will going to be low. So that means error rate will be less in the STP and but these also like UTP can have a maximum segment length of 100 meters. So it will going to carry up to 100 meters of signals. So what is the main advantage of this STP over UTP? So that it offers greater protection from interference and cross drop due to shielding. So it will avoid the interference that is external interference and cross drop. For example, when you are talking over a mobile at that time, sometime your call may connected with other person that you don't know. That means some cross drop will going to takes place. But when we have this shielded twisted pair at that time, that cross drop will going to be avoided and external interference will going to be avoided due to that shielding material here so but it is definitely heavier and costlier than UTP and require proper grounding at the both the ends so when I wanted to use this uh, STP then it must be like uh, it will be costlier than UTP and also it will be heavier due to this uh, outer or shielded coverage and also it is somehow expensive than the UTP, then we require proper grounding at both the ends. From sender to receiver, proper grounding is required. This is regarding what? Twisted pair 
cable. So next, we'll see its advantage. So what are the advantages? So, so you have to consider both UTP and uh, HTTP. Then only you can see the advantages of twisted paste together. So somehow it is simple and uh, physically flexible. As I told, it is not so inflexible. It is flexible in nature. So we can twist it, we can coil it, we can do all those operations out of it. And it can be easily connected to one another and it is easy to install and maintain. So maintenance and its installation is also easy when it compares to other type and it has a low weight. So when we consider uh, SDP and UTP together, so somehow it is not so heavy, but it is of low weight and it is very inexpensive. No need to pay much for this kind of uh, twisted pair cable. Then what are the disadvantages we have in the twisted pair cable? So data transmission rate are very low. So if I compare this with another type of transmission medium, at the time its data rate or uh, transmission rate is somehow low and it is incapable to carry a signal over long distance without use of repeaters. So we are going to use a repeater in order to strengthen the signal. So when the signal become too low, but I can't use this twisted pair cable for longer period without repeaters. So if you don't have repeaters, then the signals will going to be low, then it is not able to carry the signals. But if I have a repeaters, then only we can uh, strengthen the signals and it can uh, able to transmit for the longer distance. So repeater is always required and it has a low bandwidth. So these are the advantages and disadvantages that we have with this twisted pair cable. We'll see the second type that is coaxial cable. So in this coaxial cable, the best example is your TV cable wires. So if you see that, you can see this type of configuration that is coaxial cable. So it includes copper conductor and dielectric will be there and some mesh kind of things will be there that is braid and also we have a PVC shield. So these are the components that we have in the coaxial cable. So this type of cable consists of solid wire co core surrounded by one or more foil or wire shield. So each separated by some kind of plastic insulator. So this is what the configuration of this coaxial cable and your inner core carries the signal and the shield provides the ground. So your inner core will going to carry the signals which needs to be transmitted and this shield will going to provide the ground that means it will not able to or it will not going to allow the external interference so it will provide the security for that particular signal what they are carrying and also the coaxial cable has high electrical properties and it is suitable for high speed communication where i can use this coaxial cable when we wanted to have a high electrical properties and also it will be suitable for high speed communication. As I told earlier, most of the time we are going to use it with the television signal. This is what coaxial cable. And also we have two most commonly used types of coaxial cable. One is thick net and another one is thin net. So based on the size it will going to take. So based on the number of meters it will going to carry the signal. We have two types. One is thick net and another one is thin net. So in this thick net, this form of coaxial cable is thicker than thin net. The thick net coaxial cable segments can up to 500 meters long. So it will be thicker than this uh, thin net and it will going to carry the signal up to 500 meters long. When it comes to the thin net, so it will going to have a maximum distance of 185 meters. So that number of uh, meters can be joined. So that is the main difference between this thick net and thin net. So if you miss the number of meters long, then you are going to lose the marks, right? As it is thick net and thin net. Thick net is 500 meters long and thin net is 185 meters long. So next we have a optical fibers. So if I say optical fibers, you have to remember the broom. So how it look like? It will going to have a strands. So we are going to use those strands, right? So in this optical fiber cable that consists of thin strands of glass or glass like material which are so constructed that they carry light from source at one end of the fiber to the detector at the another end. So instead of carrying a signal, we are transmitting the light. 
so we are transmitting the light by making use of this optical fibers so here you can see we have n number of strands here and each strand is insulated or each strand is made up of what glass like material so it has a ability or it will going to be used in order to carry the light so we are sending a signal in the form of light that is in the optical fibers so it is carrying the light kind of uh, signals from one transmitter that is source at one end of the fiber to the detector or a receiver of another end and also the light sources used either it can be light emitting diodes that is it can uh, carry the signals in the form of light that light can be in the form of leds or laser diodes that is leds or lds and also it transmits the light rather than electronic signal that eliminate the problem of electrical interference so if something goes wrong with weather that will not going to affect to this optical fibers why because it is not carrying the electrical signal instead of it is carrying only the light signals so it is transmitting the lights instead of carrying the electronic signals and also this uh, optical fiber cable has ability to transmit the signal over much longer distance than coaxial as well as twisted pair and this ofcs are mainly have a capability to carry the information at very greater speed its data rate is high and it is heavier and also have a ability to transmit the signal over the longer distance even without using repeaters so here it will not going to be affected by any of the external interference why because we are not carrying the electronic signal instead of that it is carrying only or it is transmitting only light signals we'll see the advantages it is immune to electrical and magnetic interference so if something goes wrong with weather and uh, if you have any interference which is related to electrical and magnetic then that is not affected on this optical fiber cable and it is also highly suitable for harsh industrial environment so then it guarantees source transmission and has very high transmission capacity and also it can be used for broadband transmission so you can consider the lan connection so there we are going to use this optical fibers cables so next we have some of the disadvantage so it is somehow difficult to install so and also expensive so when it is having higher data rate when it is uh, able to transmit the data at a high speed at the time we have to pay more so it will be expensive when it compares to any other guided media and it is difficult to repair so it is difficult to install if something goes wrong or if some of the faults occur and somehow it is also difficult to repair it so next we have a radio waves so when we are transmitting any of the data and signal using a radio sine waves then that kind of transmission medium will be considered as what radio wave transmission we'll see now the transmission making use of radio frequencies is termed as radio wave transmission so when we are using this transmission by making use of the radio frequencies then we are going to call that as a radio wave transmission and mainly you have to consider it has two part one is transmitter and another one is receiver so when we are transmitting the data with the help of this radio frequencies then obviously we are going to have this antennas so that will going to strengthen the signals so here what is the use of transmitter as well as receiver so the transmitter takes some sort of message encode it a sine wave and transmit it with a radio wave so whatever the data we have that i wanted to send from one workstation to another workstation this transmitter will going to take that message and that will going to encodes as a sine wave and that will going to be transmitted with a radio waves so that radio waves will going to be transmitted to the receiver what receiver will going to do then so this receiver receives the radio wave and decodes the message from sine wave it receives so sine wave will be merged with a radio wave that will going to be transmitted from transmitter to receiver when it reach to the receiver radio signals will be appeared on the receiver antenna so that receiver will going to decode it whichever encoded by this transmitter which will going to be decoded it and it will going to convert that radio uh, waves or radio signals into its 
sign waves. We'll get to know what are the data and information that has been sent with the help of this radio waves. And here both the transmitter and receiver use antennas in order to radiate and capture the radio signals. So in order to capture or in order to transmit the data and information in the form of radio frequencies, antennas are used at both the side that is transmitter as well as at the side of receiver. And it also has some of the advantages and disadvantages. Which is the best example for this radio waves? That is your mobile phone. So we are all going to get the network with the help of this radio waves. So it provides the mobility and it is not so expensive when it compares to other transmission medium. And also it proves a cheaper than digging trenches for laying cables. So we are not using cable here. Instead of that, we are uh, having only antennas and transmitter and receiver. So that uh, digging of all those trenches is not required in this radio waves and it is free from land acquisition rights. So when we are uh, having it over the sky, then no need to have this land acquisition rights. So if I wanted to uh, dig the trenches and if I wanted to lay the cables, then we have to get this uh, land acquisition rights. So if it is approved, then only we can do all these things. But we are not using all those uh, digging of trenches so that it is free from land acquisition rights. And what are the disadvantages we have here? So it is an insecure communication. So if something goes wrong with the weather, everything will be gone here so that it is susceptible to weather effects like rain, thunder, storms, etc. So if any natural calamities occurs at that time, it will going to be low. So you can also take the example of dish cable and all. So this is regarding what radio waves. We'll see the next type that is satellite. So when I say satellite, you have to remember two words that is what? One is uplink, another one is downlink. So as we all know that we have our data and information with us. I wanted to get it in some other transmission media. So what this uplink will going to do? So this will going to transmit the data to the satellite. When it reaches to the satellite, again it will send back to the downlink. That means we are transmitting the data or information from one workstation to another workstation with the help of this satellite. This uplink and downlink both will be in the ground station, but this satellite will be in the air. That is, it will be set in the geostationary orbit. You can see here a satellite consists of transponders that is unit that receive on one frequency and retransmit to others. So it will uh, receive the signal that uh, going to transmit the or retransmit the data to another signal. That is the use of having that transponders. So this satellite consists of that uh, transponders. So that are set in geostationary orbits which is directly over the equator. And also this satellite communication is special case of microwave relay system and these geostationary orbits are 22,000 up to 36,000 kilometer from the Earth's surface. So as I told, so this uh, geostationary orbit will be 22,000 to 36,000 away from the ground station. So we have uplink as well as we have downlink here. So this uplink uh, transmits of data to the satellite. This uplink will going to transmit the data to the satellite but this downlink is the receiver of data. Then uplinks and downlinks are also called as earth station because they are located on the earth. So we are going to call this uplink and downlink as a earth station. Why? Because it is located on the ground or it is located on the earth. That's why it will be considered as earth station. But we have a satellite, we are going to send the data from uplink to satellite. Again, that uh, satellite will going to retransmit the data to the downlink. This downlink will going to receive the data here. And also we have some of the advantages that includes the area coverage through satellite transmission is very large. It will be worldwide. It will be related to globe also. Next, no line of sight restrictions and also the heavy usage makes satellites commercial attractive. So nowadays we are all using the satellites in order to transmit the data signals and also a station which receives the signals can be fixed position or relatively mobile. So no need to dig the trenches again and again. So once it is fixed, it can be fixed on the like a station. Both the downlink and uplink will going to be stayed at one position or stayed at a fixed position and uh, we can 
also go with the mobility. That means if you wanted to change the location of uplink and downlink, that is also possible. What are the disadvantages? So if we have these many advantages, some uh, it must be what expensive. So it is very expensive and signals sent to the stations can be tempered by external interference. So when it is in the air at that time, sometimes it is susceptible to the weather changes like uh, rain, storms and uh, thunders that may affect on this satellite communication. So we'll see the next type that is infrared. So main best example is your TV and TV remote. So whatever the signal that you are going to get from the tip of your uh, TV remote is what we are going to call that as a infrared rays. So this type of transmission uses infrared light in order to send the data. So in the radio waves, we are going to use radio waves in order to transmit the data. In the infrared, we are using the infrared uh, light in order to send the data. And also the infrared light transmit the data through the air and can propagate throughout a room. So that is bouncing off surfaces. So when it reaches to any of the wall or a hard surfaces, at the time it will going to bounce back. That means it can't uh, penetrate the wall. So that, but it will not penetrate the wall. So it can only bounce when it uh, reaches to some of the surface or a hard particles. At the time it will bounce back, but it can't penetrate through walls. So then where we are going to use this uh, infrared rays, so it is most commonly used in the PDS that is personal digital assistant like a palm top or a handheld devices like palm pilots. So there we are going to have this infrared as a transmission medium and we are going to consider this infrared transmission as a secure one. And also we have a next type that is related to laser. So when it comes to the laser, it mainly requires direct line of sight. For example, if I wanted to record a video, my eyesight needs to be connected with a camera. I can't see that and there. So that is what uh, when we are uh, transmitting any of the data and information with this laser, then it must have a direct line of sight. So it will going to have a straight line of a sight here and it is unidirectional. It is uh, like a microwave. It has a unidirectional but has has much higher speed than the microwaves. So we are comparing microwaves with this uh, laser. It is also unidirectional and also it has high speed than the microwave. The laser transmission requires the use of laser transmitter and a, a photosensitive receiver at each end. So as we have a transmitter and receiver here also I require this transmitter and also I require photosensitive receiver. So in order to transmit the signal from one end to another end, the laser transmission is a point to point transmission typically between buildings. So but it can't penetrate through walls, but it can uh, have a transmission of point to point with buildings and also it has some of the disadvantage. It can be adversely affected by the weather. So if something goes wrong with weather, then we can suspect able uh, to the weather changes which is going to affect on this laser lights or laser kinds of signal. It's all about today's session. Thank you.